Welcome back. All right, so today we're going to do a career video on Dave Taylor. Dave Taylor spent his entire career with the LA Kings. So coming up with a jersey choice and getting the magnets on the board, pretty easy for today. Early 80s, mid 80s, garb, and the logo from, of course, the late 80s, early 90s. So Dave Taylor was a number 210 pick in 1975. So a very late draft pick by the LA Kings and showing that Sometimes those guys who are drafted late turn out to be pretty good. So for Dave Taylor, he makes his debut in the NHL in 77-78. Plays 64 games, 22 goals, 21 assists, 43 points. Nice debut season. Uh, two games in the playoffs, no points. Then 78-79, they throw him on a line with Charlie Simmer and Marcel Dion. What would become known as the Triple Crown line was born. And his totals went through the roof. In 78 games, he scores 43 goals, which was 6th overall in the NHL. To go with 48 assists and 91 points. Those 91 points, ninth overall in the NHL. Again, two playoff games, no points. The one thing, the one thing with that era for the Kings, as great as the Triple Crown line was, they just could not get over the hump in the playoffs. 79-80, he plays 61 games. He has 37 goals, 53 assists, 90 points. Remarkable season considering only 61 games played. And then in the playoffs, he adds two goals and an assist. But again, it's four games played. Uh, in the playoffs for Taylor. 80-81, 72 games, 47 goals, which would be a career high for him. Doesn't make the top 10 because we're into the early 80s now, so good luck. Uh, 65 assists, which is ninth overall in the NHL, and 112 points, which is fifth overall in the National Hockey League. In the playoffs, he adds two goals and two assists. That is over four games. So again, they're out early. Uh, gets into the All-Star game. Second team All-Star as well in the National Hockey League and 7th in Selkie voting. So of his three line mates, or of the three on the line, I should say, which is, otherwise it sounds like there's four of them on that line, but of him and his line mates being Simmer and Dion, he is the most defensively responsible of the three. He's the most likely to come back and back check a little bit. Uh, then 81-82, uh, 78 games played, 39 goals, 67 assists, which is ninth overall that year in the league, 106 points, which is ninth overall. Plays 10 games. So this, of course, is the miracle on Manchester season where the Kings knocked out the Edmonton Oilers just to be knocked out in the second round by the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, four goals and six assists for 10 points for Taylor over those 10 games. He gets into another All-Star game, but again, the Kings are out early. 82-83, he only plays 46 games that year. 21 goals, 37 assists, 48 for 58 points. So again, his points per game is excellent. You know, it's around 100 point. Uh, projection over a full 80 games that's not bad 83 84 63 games played 20 goals 49 assists 69 points so again this is above point per game but this is during an era where there's a lot of guys scoring a lot of points so it is easy to overlook dave taylor at this point in his career uh 84 85 and 79 games 41 goals 51 assists 92 points would become the captain of the team in 1985 in three playoff games, two goals, two assists, four points. So he gets four points in the playoffs, but only plays three games. And so that is definitely a storyline when it comes to Dave Taylor's career, is that he played on a lot of Kings teams that just weren't able to get over the hump in the playoffs. 85-86, uh, 76 games, 33 goals, 38 assists, 71 points. He did play in the All-Star game that year as well. So still some All-Star production, but... His production is dropping off, 86-87, 67 games played, 18 goals, 44 assists for 62 points. He adds two goals, three assists for five points in five playoff games. Then in 87-88, 68 games played, 26 goals, 41 assists, 67 points. In the playoffs, three goals, three assists for six points in five games. Produces well in the playoffs, but again, his points totals are definitely off from where they were when he was in his prime here. 88-89, as Gretzky's coming in, so we're ending the Marcel Dion era, we're starting the Wayne Gretzky era, uh, he would hand the captaincy over to Wayne Gretzky. I, Wayne Gretzky's not the type who just walk in and go, yeah, so I'm going to be captain, um, but he was definitely the type to walk into the locker room, and I, I don't think anybody would have said, well, we're not giving you the captaincy, that's just, that would be crazy talk. So, 88-89 uh, and 70 games, he has 26 goals, 37 assists, 63 points. In the playoffs, 11 games, one goal, five assists, six points. So the Kings at least get into the second round. But again, they're not able to get past that mark. 
Uh, 89-90, 58 games played, 15 goals, 26 assists, 41 points. He adds four goals, four assists for eight points in six playoff games. So he doesn't play a lot in the playoffs, but his points totals in the playoffs are pretty good. So there's there's that, right? And at this point, he has become a legend to the Kings. There's no discussions of moving Taylor, anything like that. Um, might be later in his career, but yeah, there was no discussions I ever saw of Dave Taylor being on a trade block or anything else like that. Uh, 90 91, 73 games, 23 goals, 30 assists, 53 points. In the playoffs, just two goals, one assist for three points in 12 games. So the totals have started to drop now, even in the playoffs. And 91 92, it really takes a drop. 77 games, 10 goals, 19 assists, 29 points. And in the playoffs, one goal, one assist, two points in six games. So as we get to 92 93 for Dave Taylor, he has basically become a leader on the ice. Um, he is as close as I think you would get to an assistant coach who's also playing for your team at that stage in the National Hockey League. He ends up playing 48 games in 92-93 during the regular season. Six goals, nine assists, 15 points. But this is an LA Kings team that goes all the way to the Stanley Cup Final. In 22 playoff games, three goals, five assists, eight points in what would prove to be his final playoff appearance. So, of course, they don't end up winning the Stanley Cup. That goes to the Montreal Canadiens. And then 93-94 would be Taylor's final season. In 33 games, he records four goals, three assists, seven points. Again, the offense is done, but he is named to the All-Star game. This is when one veteran was put onto each All-Star team. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, basically it was something that they did for, it feels like about half a decade, almost a decade, where one veteran would be named to the team. I wouldn't mind seeing that brought back on some level, but at any rate, he did play. That was his fourth All-Star game altogether. And in 90-91, I should have mentioned here, I'll go back and mention this now, he did have his leadership recognized on the ice by being given the Masterton for being dedicated to hockey and the King Clancy, which is for charity work and things he was doing in the community. Dave Taylor, really a leader on and off the ice for the LA Kings. He ends up retiring with 1,111 games played, 431 goals, which is 75th on the all-time list. 638 assists, which is 73rd on the all-time list. 1,069 points, which is 68th on the all-time list. In the playoffs, 92 games played, so he does not reach 100. Absolutely would have playing for another team. Uh, 26 goals, 33 assists, 59 points. And really, uh, Taylor comes through a, a relatively mediocre era for the Kings into the Gretzky era. And in the Gretzky era, he got a lot more attention than he did during the mediocre era, which makes sense. People suddenly paid attention to the Kings uh, once Gretzky got there. Other interesting uh, notes here, his international play uh, for Team Canada gets silver in 1985 at the World Championships and in 83 and 86, bronze medals. So medals for that. And he also had a stuttering problem that brought him early into his career. And he didn't really talk about it. He would just pretend he was hyper- uh, hyperventilating during interviews so that people wouldn't notice he had a stuttering problem. He did get that fixed. Uh, he got the, the proper attention to get that stuttering problem fixed. Good on him for that and good on him for admitting as well that he had a stuttering problem. Because I can only imagine for athletes coming up now that would be very difficult. Because during interviews, of course, the stuttering would take over and it would cause people to make remarks and things to be said and whatnot. So uh, good on Taylor for overcoming that. Good long career. It is a shame he didn't win a Stanley Cup ring. However, uh, yeah, really good career as a player, played for a very long time. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.